This week, I get soaked in a rainstorm, dry off in the world's most luxurious airline terminal, and take a first-class flight on a Boeing 747, all in an effort to save a few quid shipping some parcels to the UK. I have a bit of a problem. You see, I need to get these three boxes to the UK, to the guy who sends out our merch in the UK. These boxes are quite heavy, and I need them there by next week. UPS, I've just quoted, and they are going to charge me, get this, 2,800 US dollars to ship three boxes to London for next week. I'm confident that I can get them there cheaper than that, and probably faster too. All right, I think I might have found a solution. We've got to get to the airport. So I've managed to find a way to get these boxes of Noel Phillips merch over to my distributor in the UK for tomorrow afternoon and for a fraction of the price, I think, than flying them by UPS or FedEx or any of these other courier companies. The bad news is it means I'm going to have to take them there myself, which means I've got to travel now to the airport, get to the airport, literally fly them over to London and then come back again. Um, but the good news is that we're going to be doing it in style. So my first stop today then was to get to Houston Intercontinental Airport and drop off these boxes. Okay, we need to get to the other side. Okay, just at the bottom there. Lovely, thank you. So first things first, I had to check in my boxes, which seemed to be causing a little confusion. Hey there, how are you? So I just need to drop these three, please. I've got my boarding passes, so I don't know. Uh, she sent me over here. Yeah, of course. So, Some of my boxes disappeared down the conveyor belt of doom. I was left with just a slip of paper and a prayer that they'd actually turn up in London tomorrow. Now it was time to jump on the plane. You see, I've managed to pick up myself United Airlines Platinum status for 2024, thanks to all the flying that I did last year. Um, and that entitles me basically to three checked bags, or in my case, checked boxes, up to a weight of £70 per box. Also through flying a lot last year, I have a lot of air miles to use and I figured that by using a few of those and a little bit of money as well, but I'll tell you how much at the end of the video, I might as well enjoy a couple of days flying on one of the world's best first class products just to be able to take a few boxes to London. So firstly, I need to go and get on my first flight of this trip and it's a pretty cool one. Thank All right, thank you. Hello. Thank you. Did you see the little right here? Are they in the back? Are they not? Oh, right, first flight up to Chicago, Boeing 757-300 in first class. The 757-300 is the longest version of the 757 and we don't see them very often in Houston. They usually seem to serve United's Hawaii routes, but it was great to get a ride up 112 Chicago on a route that's normally served by 737s. Chicago O'Hare. Seems to spend half my life here at the minute, but this is where we're connected on to something really cool. That was a cool flight. 757-300. Not been on one of those for a while. That was pretty cool, but now the real star of the show. So let's get across to the international terminal because we are about to take a ride on a 747 in first class. And, and I really hope that my boxes have made it. I've got no air tag in them. Maybe I ought to have done that. You know, I seem to recall flights going internationally from Chicago O'Hare. You had to sort of go to a different terminal, but apparently not. We're in the same terminal, the same concourse even. B gates, how cool. So I don't even have to leave, I can just sort of go to a lounge and then chill and then go and get on the plane. Wicked. Hello, how are you? I got it wrong. There we go, yeah, thank you. The Polaris Lounge in Chicago is pretty nice and at this time of night it was pretty empty too. <sighs> All right, so I've come to the Polaris Lounge here at Chicago because apparently it's a bit nicer than the United Club Lounge in the other terminal. It's a bit of a walk though down to the Lufthansa gate but hey that's okay it's quite nice quite quiet 
So, um, yeah, I was looking at these redemptions for this flight tonight because this first week of January, I figured it'd be really, really busy getting trying to get a redemption on a flight, especially last minute when you look on literally the same day. And I had a look on United this morning and I could have got a non-stop flight from Houston to London with United for about 80,000 miles in Polaris business class. Still pretty good. Then I got to thinking, hang on a minute, could we do something really cool with this? Because I know that Lufthansa are in the same alliance as United and you just have to scroll a little bit further down and you could find other little cool routes that you can try and pick up. And I found this route, taking a 757-300 up here to Chicago, a 747 to Frankfurt in first class on Lufthansa, which is like ridiculous and then connecting on from there to London, that whole itinerary, 140,000 miles. I've got like 200,000 miles in my United account. So, so far, this trip has cost me 34 US dollars to try and bring these boxes all the way to London. If they make it, this is Lufthansa we're talking about and it's Frankfurt we're talking about and I've had bags lost a couple of times there before, so fingers crossed, but hey, we, we, we might be okay. All right, time to head down to the gate where my plane is hopefully waiting and hopefully my boxes will be also waiting and getting on the plane we'll find out i haven't put an air tag in them i ought to have done that really haven't i to make sure that they get tracked all the way through because there's, look, there's merch on the line here there's no phillips socks on the line here on its way over to the uk we can't have them getting lost in chicago or frankfurt but hey we'll find out when we get to london if they actually make it but in the meantime let's get down to the gate and get on board the lufthansa 747 Jumbo Jet Baby. Oh yes. So here we were, it was finally time to get on board the Lufthansa 747 and turn left into the nose. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah. First class. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, all right, thank you. I mean, you didn't need to sound so surprised. Uh, Lufthansa's first class on the 747 has just six seats and it's right up here in the nose of the jumbo, actually in front of the flight deck. Well, I'm not gonna lie, for $34, you can't really complain at this, can you? I'm whispering, it's a very quiet, very exclusive cabin. This is literally as far forward as you can get. I am in front of the cockpit, the pilots, the flight deck behind me upstairs. This is as far forward as you can get. I will be the first person pretty much on this flight to arrive into Frankenfurt tonight. We've got a nice flat bed here, some macadamia nut, glass of water, a meanity kit down there and a nice rose. The cabin crew came around with pre-takeoff drinks, a hot towel and a menu. You can eat at any time you like during the flight, but I just chose to wait until the morning and have breakfast as it was pretty late at night already. I said one thing that you do get flying first class on Lufthansa that you don't get in business class from my last experience is a nice pair of jammers. And these are very nice. I've been got changed because it's not a very long flight tonight, about seven and a half hours. I'm planning to get some sleep after we take off and then eat in the morning. So I thought I'd get changed and then once we're airborne I can get some rest, hopefully, fingers crossed. Taxiing out to the runway, sitting right in the nose, feels a little strange as the nose wheel's actually behind you. This means as you taxi you end up right over the grass as the pilots keep the wheels on the centre line. It wasn't too long though before we were lining up on Chicago's runway 28 right and getting on our way across to Frankfurt. Now one crazy thing about sitting so close to the nose wheel on the 747 is how much noise it makes. Just listen to how quiet the cabin goes once the gear is retracted. Isn't that crazy? Our route tonight then took us east out of Chicago to cross Toronto and Montreal before coasting out over Newfoundland. We coasted into the UK over Northern Ireland before crossing the north of England and the North Sea, flying just south of Amsterdam and down into Frankfurt. Flight time tonight was 7 hours 31 minutes, cruising at 35 and 37,000 feet. 
Once the seatbelt sign was switched off, the flight attendant came round to make the beds. Alright then, so airborne out of Chicago, heading across to Frankfurt. I am not going to actually eat tonight. I'm going to have my breakfast as my sort of main meal in the morning because it's like I've got a seven hour, 20 minute flight to Frankfurt. It's a really quick flight tonight. So I'm going to try and get as much sleep as I can. They've just come and made my bed up for me. This is so comfortable, it's unreal. This is a two meter long bed. This is a two meter long bed. That's what it looks like. I'm six foot five, by the way. I've actually grown an inch, for those of you who've been watching a while. Don't know how. Maybe I'm just standing up straighter or something. But anyway, um, I've grown an inch. I'm six five and I'm very comfortable. And they've got really nice bedding and everything on here as well. That's quite nice. And we've got a nice amenity kit as well to go through. So I'm going to go through the amenity kit. So what do we have? Let's have a look. A few toiletries and things. Nice pair of Lufthansa socks. An eye mask in the shape of scuba diving goggles. That's quite cool. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. I might have to wear that tonight. That's what I was looking for. A first class toothbrush kit, which is wooden. A wooden shoehorn. It's been a while since I've seen a shoehorn in an amenity kit, actually. Lufthansa stepping up in the game with that. A um, hairbrush that unfolds. Like mints and things like that to freshen your breath. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I've had better. Then I've also had a lot worse, including on Lufthansa, because they're business class and mini ticket. I don't actually remember if they have one. I think I did get one. There was a really flimsy eye mask when I flew on it. It wasn't that brilliant. But the first class one comes in a nice clear bag, which is nice. That's handy for liquids and stuff, isn't it, when you're going through security? Well thought out, Lufthansa. I like that German efficiency. I'm going to try and get some sleep and see where I wake up in the morning. I think we've got about seven and a half hours or so until we get to Frankfurt. Hopefully my boxes are down in the cargo hold underneath me as I speak. We will find out, I guess, when we get to London. I'm getting more and more nervous the more we go through, but hey, I'm gonna go get some sleep. Good night. Morning. I've managed to get a few hours sleep at least on the flight over. We are now just about to hit Northern Ireland. Not a massive amount of sleep overnight. Just slept for like a few hours on and off, but hey, in some sleep at least, and hopefully in about another hour and a half, landing down into Frankfurt. Now isn't it a sad state of affairs when even posting relatively innocuous videos of riding on planes on the internet can result in the trolls coming out to play. And when I say trolls, I'm not just talking people with little bits of criticism here and there. I'm talking vile, nasty, jealous people living in their mom's basement who thrive by putting lies and slander online about people and saying some of the most horrible things. These sorts of people, unfortunately, are part of life when you do this as a job, I guess. But the fact is, you know that most of the time, you could bump into any of these people in the streets and they'd never have the guts to say anything negative to you, to your face. But you know, although deep down I know that these people are literally just jealous little trolls in need of a little bit of love and attention themselves, sometimes my brain doesn't always tell me that. It'll play tricks on me and tell me things like these people's opinions are valid and these people's opinions are correct and that's not necessarily the case and on a bad day I can read some of these comments and it'll just set me spiralling. And that's why I'm really grateful to this week's video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp have a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists to get you the help that you need and getting access to these is really straightforward. You just go onto the website, answer a few questions, and you get matched with a licensed therapist who you can then do live chats with. You can even do video calls with them. And if at any point you figure out it's not working with that particular therapist, well, that's fine. You can change to a different one. No hard feelings on either side. Right now, BetterHelp are offering you your first month completely free of charge. When you use my link on the screen now, betterhelp.com slash noel. That's betterhelp.com slash n-o-e-l. As we flew over my old hometown of Mansfield, I found it only appropriate to commemorate the occasion with a trip to the loo. It's time for the Noel Phillips Loo Review. It is indeed 
time for the Lou Review and this is the Lufthansa 747 Lou Review and of course it's a Lou with a view. There's the Lou, there's the view. Um, this is very nice actually, we've got um, a beautiful sort of unit here with all sorts of bits and pieces in it. What we got? Body cream, lotions, facial sprays, deodorants, tissues, nice little ruse over there um, and a quite a nice sink unit just here and this little bit here this is the toilet with like a seat on it that you can sort of lift up um, and obviously the toilet is underneath that very nice indeed I have to say traditionally I've not necessarily enjoyed flying on Lufthansa I've flown in business class a few times with them never been that good their business class isn't that brilliant the first class is okay but the first class is probably more like business class on a lot of other airlines, I would say. I've flown much better first classes than Lufthansa, but then again, I've flown worse first classes as well. Um, there is no denying that first class on Lufthansa is nothing like first class on Emirates or Singapore Airlines or any of those sorts of airlines. But for a European airline, it's not too bad. And it probably beats British Airways a little bit I have to say, although I haven't flown in their first class in a while, I do need to fly on that again soon. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this view and enjoy the Lou for a few moments. By the way, my t-shirt, the Lou Review t-shirt, you can get it in the merch store at noelphillips.com, the merch store that we are freshly restocking, hopefully, on this trip with these boxes that are hopefully under my feet at the minute. Um, we will we will we'll find out. But um, anyway, I'm going to use the facilities and um, go head back to my seat. That was the Noel Phillips Lou Review. When I got back to my seat, the cabin crew had taken my bed down and started to serve up breakfast. I went for the scrambled eggs and bacon today, which apart from being quite healthy, was also really tasty. As we crossed Lincolnshire, I was amazed just how much flooding you could see down below. As it would turn out, this would be a little bit of an omen for my arrival into London later that day. It was pretty cool flying over the wash though, which looks a whole lot smaller from this high up than it did on the times I flew the small plane over it when we lived in England. I decided to break out the Atmo tube to see what the air quality was like on the 747. It got an air quality rating of 86%, which is actually pretty good, but the humidity was crazy dry at 10%, one of the lowest I've ever seen while flying. The Atmo tube gives you all sorts of air quality stats straight to your phone. I really do love mine. Check them out at the link in the description. You'll get 20% off with promo code NOL. And while I had my phone out, I checked out Lufthansa's Wi-Fi. First class gets you free Wi-Fi, which was pretty smooth and reliable, although it wouldn't let me complete a speed test. It was pretty quick though, and it was more than enough to post a few stories to Instagram. Pretty soon we were starting our descent down into Frankfurt, and it was pretty clear that they'd had quite a lot of wet weather as well. Nice to meet good, you anyway. Nice to meet you. Have a good trip. Thank you very much, yes. How are you staying in Europe? Uh, London today and then back to America tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> so one night. <laughs> okay. A lot of travelling. Lots of travelling, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right, our feed is in to Frankfurt Airport. Not my favourite airport in the world, but we don't have to stay in this terminal because we've just arrived 
in first class, we get to go to use Lufthansa's own first class terminal, which I'm going to go and try and find because even though I've just got off a first class flight, I can use that terminal before I get on my next flight over to London. So let's go and see if we'll find it. To get to the first class terminal, you've got to first clear immigration and then head outside to walk down to another building. You do only have to do this once though, as I found out a little later on. Once you leave the terminal, you turn left, walk straight past all the taxis that you see parked up, and then you'll see the first class terminal coming up ahead. This looks like it. Lufthansa first class, baby. Let's go inside. Hello, how are you? Good time. So I've just arrived off a first class flight okay. and I'm connecting on to London, so yeah. can I come in? You uh, came on the Chicago yeah, four, three, first. Three. Yeah, that's fine, of course, yes. I would just need your um, passport. Of course. Thank okay, you so much. Thank you. Come on, guys, London. Hi, right, thank you. Hello, how are you? You clear a private security checkpoint here in the first class terminal, which is a lot more civilized than the one in the main terminal. Thank you. Hi, Hi. Hi. how are you? Welcome. Thank you. You are here the first time? Uh, yeah, first okay. time here, yeah. <laughs> I only heard about this place today, so I <laughs> thought I'd come and try it. <laughs> yes. Okay, so on the right side is the bar and the restaurant. Okay. The colleagues from Kefa will take care of you. Okay. You can eat from the buffet or a la carte. Uh -huh. On the right side, we have a smoking area. Yep. Straight ahead are the showers, toilets and bedrooms. Okay. Yep. Um, if you want to work or have private calls or something, here are the Just work space units. here, yeah, okay. Correct. I keep the passport, send okay. it to the border police. We pick it up later together. Okay, perfect. Um, I pick so you up around 4.45. 4.45, okay. And okay. I will find you. Oh, okay, okay. perfect. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. The first class terminal is a real gem and it was a lovely place to relax before my next flight. So this is Lufthansa's private first class terminal here in Frankfurt. How cool is this? You come in, you've got your own private security, private passport control and I think when it's time to board the flight, I think they get you over to your plane so you don't have to walk back round. This is so nice. Well, seeing as though I can, I figured I'd come and grab a shower while I'm here because they've got these private shower rooms. Just look at this. This is like a, a loo review and a half, isn't it? We've got the main bathroom. There's a little toilet down there. And a shower up there. Oh, that's freshen up. I've got a couple of hours till my next flight over to London. So all my boxes are working their way through through Frankfurt Airport and probably getting lost along the way. I thought I'd come and grab a shower and chill here for a bit. <laughs> That's better. When my flight started boarding, the staff came to collect me and clear border control before taking me across to my flight. Okay, so on the right side, you get your passport back. Okay, perfect, thank you. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Shen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number two. Uh huh. Sit down there. I'll just give you our actual first oh, class well. basket. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the boarding pass one more time. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you as well. Yeah. So, Mr. Sand will bring you to the plane. All right. Sir. Hello. Thank, Thank you. Flight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Next, I was led outside to the Porsche that would take me across to the plane. This has to be the coolest boarding process that I've ever done. Thank you. As if being driven to the plane by a private Porsche wasn't cool enough, we got to drive right across the apron at Frankfurt to the side of my ride to London. This has got to be every Avgeek's dream come true. Pretty soon we arrived at the E190 that would take me across to London City Airport with a lot less stress than I imagined the passengers in the terminal would be having. Hello, 
Hi. Hi, hey, I'm good. Thank you very much. Yes, perfect. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, sir. thank you very much. Thank you. Being the last to board, I always find a little bit embarrassing. Am I the only one who feels like the entire aircraft is judging me? That's pretty cool, wasn't it? Being driven to the plane in a Porsche from the first class terminal. The first time that's happened. Wow. Anyway, we're on board. Embraer 119. One hour flight to London. Hopefully the boxes are underneath. We'll see you soon. After a super short hour long hop, we made our approach into London City Airport on a lovely miserable January evening. The approach was incredibly bumpy and as Captain Smashdown planted us into the ground in London, the guy in front of me promptly lost his phone down the plane. Well, if my Noel Phillips mugs had made it into the cargo hold intact, they probably weren't any more after that landing. Now I'm back in London, I can officially say that the weather here was absolutely minging. And now I'd have to get these boxes out to the car and on the road if they've made it, of course. made it. Now to see if the boxes have made it as well. Fingers crossed. And once I'd cleared passport control I wouldn't have long to find out. All right moment of truth. Have the packages arrived? And so I stood waiting and waiting and waiting before eventually I saw a box. A, a soggy box. And soon after that came another one. And eventually the third one. They were wet but mostly intact apart from a hole ripped in the side of one of them with a Frankfurt Airport sticker that translated to we take care of it. Hmm, seems a little bit ironic that. But anyway, after a stop for a selfie with a fan. It was time to single-handedly try to get two airport trolleys across London City Airport in the middle of a rainstorm, all without losing me box. Yeah, I'm it to Hertz. Is it this way? Hertz. Hertz, yeah. This is open. It's behind the building. Yeah. We're on the main road. Okay, thank this you. This is open. Yeah, you said it was staying open. Oh, All right, okay. so. right, thank you. Trying to get these trolleys across to the car rental shed felt like I was in an episode of Ninja Warrior as I got soaked and the already soggy boxes got even wetter as I tried to navigate my way around the assault course that is London City Airport. I tried to wait for a gap in the weather, but one just didn't come, so I had no choice but to try and make a run for it. The car rental place is miles from the terminal building, and it's really no fun when you're struggling with two trolleys and three boxes in the British weather. Eventually though, and soaked to the skin, I made it across to the rental car. Oh my goodness. I knew London weather was terrible, but this is ridiculous. And boxes, well, they, they've made it, albeit the boxes are a little bit damp um, from the rain, from me pushing them. That was a nightmare getting across London City Airport. Thankfully, the rental car place stayed open for me, and I've picked up my rental car, and I'm now heading on my way to the Noel Phillips Distribution Centre in North London. And I'm going to be there in about 40 minutes. <sighs> Let's go and do this drop, and then I need a wee, because I'm busting. 
And so, with my mission almost complete, I had just one job left. To get my parcels to the top secret Noel Phillips UK distribution facility just off the A10 in Hertfordshire. And with that, the UK facility was finally restocked, meaning my merch is now available for sale direct from the UK at noelphillips.com. Oh, and it had only cost me $142 to get it there. I forgot how bad British weather was. This is dreadful. Well, there we go. The drop-off is made. Our UK distribution manager, Neil, have um, has you, well, you've taken delivery of the goods. A little bit soggy. and But still, within 24 hours of setting off from Houston, they're here in North London. Sunny, sunny North London. Sunny, sunny England. Anyway, I've, I've had enough now. Should we go and get a curry? Let's go and get a curry. Right, let's go. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.